as always, I did not want to keep you guys in the dark. So I wanted to share the latest and greatest news here at the Vikings Garage. I did finally track down a daily driver, a car that I have been chasing for a while. Some of you might already know what that is. But without any further ado, I want to first share some old footage with you guys. And then we'll get to the nitty and gritty. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. And on today's episode, I will show you guys what I believe to be the best car you can buy for under five grand. What's going on guys? I am totally freestyling over here. At first I said to myself, you know, I'm not gonna record myself again before going to look at a car because I feel like it's bad karma. But in the same token, I also wanna document the journey, right? That's what it's all about anyways. So obviously I'm not gonna reveal what car it is because I want you guys to watch a little more of the video, but uh, let's just say I have been chasing this car for about two years and uh yeah covid hit and the rest is history you guys know how that goes uh, car prices went through the roof and people just went bananas but i think fingers crossed if everything goes well we're gonna get ourselves a new car for the channel today well guys i knew it i shouldn't have recorded it this is definitely not going to be the car. But let me show you guys what I was actually looking at. First, I'm going to tell you guys why I'm not getting it. And then I'll show you the, the car. I guess the search continues. What a bummer. All right, so that should be a telltale sign of what we're looking at here today. But let me just show you what I did find. You open this trunk. First of all, the smell is overwhelming. And why are we having the floor showing over there? Not to mention, when you look underneath the carriage there on these corners, they are rotting right through. Look at this side. This side is even worse, man. But this is, I mean, everything is here. But the toolkit, which we all know is actually pretty pricey. Let me get my glasses before I smash them up. But this is actually the reason why I'm not going to buy it. One reason. This is probably needs addressing, so you can't even use the sunroof, but this is the deal breaker for me. I do not want more rusty cars. I can deal with this. I can totally deal with this. That's, that wasn't even a problem to me, but I have a problem with this. This I have a problem. Like, come on, man. I just cannot catch a break. Am I being too picky, guys? What do you think? Yes, a couple of dents here and there, but for the price I was about to pay for this, I just cannot do it. I'm not going to do it. I do not want one of these with rust in it. I mean, look at the fender. It's just, again, these are things that can be addressed. It's totally not a big deal, but come on. Rust? I don't want more rust. Yeah, sorry guys. Not leading you guys on, but at least now you guys know what I'm chasing. Oh yeah, and for those uh, that are curious, let me show you the mileage actually. I mean the seats. It's kind of a given. This is pretty typical. I mean, look at this one. That should be a dead giveaway how much he's actually trying to get for this car, but yeah, pretty low mileage, man. But other than this, there's like all sorts of cosmetic stuff going on here that, I mean, it is what it is, but I know I'm not buying a perfect specimen, but the problem is that's what led me to look at the roof there is that I started seeing these stains. I hope this is like informative to some of you guys. If you see stains in your headliner, that's a telltale sign that something's definitely wrong. See, there's another little piece missing there. I mean, for what he's asking though, 
I'm gonna have to walk away. Not to mention, maybe somebody in the comment section can tell me, is it me? Am I overreacting or that temperature looks a little on the high side? This does not look normal to me. Let me know in the comments down below, but eh, that's it, guys. I'm gonna have to walk away from this one. I gotta say, though, see? This one's a little hard to... I didn't like the fact that this one didn't have uh, heated seats. Wooden steering wheel. The wooden steering wheel, I could always get it uh, easily, but the fact that it didn't have the heated seats, I, I, I didn't like that. The um, cup holder does work sometimes. Yeah, when it feels like it. <laughs> Come on. No, it doesn't want to work. <laughs> Isn't that something? Well, last time I looked at this car, it worked with me. Apparently now it's shy, so it doesn't want to work. But well, that is it, guys. Let me go return this car. We're not pulling the trigger on this. So here it is. Uh, I have test driven a few of these and I am here, uh, Pennsylvania. A little bit of a ride for me. It was only about an hour and a half away. But to be honest with you, considering the price that this car has, and I'll show you guys the mileage in a second, along with my findings as far as maybe perhaps these are checks that you guys should be making when looking for a car. Let's face it, it is an older car, it's not perfect, but as far as body goes, this thing is solid. So let me show you the defects that I found in the, on the outside. Small little detail there, I'll have to try to secure that a little better. There was obviously some sort of something going on there, but nothing really crazy. Yes, the paint is starting to fade over here on this fender. But this is, if it is something that bothers me, it's something that can be addressed later on. Uh, the important bit here is rust, guys. You always want to look for rust around the wheel wells. Yes, there's like a little something happening here. But again, for the most part, you got to understand this car is solid. It does have brand new brakes in the rear. The front ones, to be honest with you, if I am going to buy this, I'll probably have to address it at some point. Rear bumper is not too excessively beat up. And again, these are just small imperfections when you consider what this car is and how much they are actually asking for it. Guy gave me briefly a story on who owned it. Antenna is clearly going to be an issue. It's not necessarily retracting, but again, this is what it is. Body-wise, the car has never been uh, to a body shop, as far as I was told. There is a couple indications here and there that that might not be true, but it does have some scuffs here and there. And for the most part, for what I've seen throughout all my searches, this thing is solid. I did open the hood. Let's take a look underneath here. There is something that's a little concerning to me, but I think I've connected dots and I think what's actually going on here so little, two little samples that's oil which is definitely black but that's the reason my worries and that's transmission fluid which smells still okay but it's probably should be addressed you always of course want to check your fluids you can replace the struts on this one but the first thing that I noticed right away is on this reservoir if you see that this fluid is extremely low for what it is so that is probably a telltale sign of what happened here they had a small hose from a small hose. They had a small leak from that hose. You can see the little cut there. And what they did is they just kind of repaired it with that clamp. But the guy actually never dumped off the fluid. So I'm not too worried there. And uh, goes without saying, it has no lights on. Fresh battery, although these are not the greatest batteries they can put on these cars. Missing the nut there and not the end of the world. Fan a little hard to. Uh, drive belt excuse me it's very cold here so i'm doing this on the fly the drive belt is a little dry uh, but you know again stuff like that to me is minor as far as interior goes it's not terrible you're expected wear for a car with uh, 20 something years old everything as far as power seat works there's something going on here with the trim that i'm gonna have to adjust not really a deal breaker show you guys the mileage as you can see the mileage is super low for what it is small little crack there on the dash again when you really start nitpicking it is 
got some signs of wear. This guy is a little lazy, but it's a good sign when you see that the asteroid was not used. I personally like that. Again, another one that is a little sticky is this guy, which is your cup holder. A little crack there, crack on the armrest. A little chunk missing on that panel there. But at the end of the day, guys, what I'm really looking for here is something that I can drive every day in comfort from and to work. And that is the purpose of this vehicle. Um, yeah, I figure I share with you guys. I am super excited. Let me show you guys in the trunk here what I actually found. I don't know if that, that might be, be locked. No, it's actually open. And definitely something you want to do with these cars is you pull the carpets out and you look on these corners and as you can see here this is okay this is perfectly fine for what it is last one of these that i did look at the you can see the daylight on that corner was completely rotted through and how cool is this that you still got the complete kit that came with the car including the flashlight this one is always always missing but it's all in here Apparently, it's a one-owner car, and the Carfax does confirm that. And the gentleman that owned it owned the parts store, and this is the car that he chose to drive himself from and to work. And as you can see here, everything is in place as it should be. This is the way you want to be buying a the car. And there's your spare with all the tools. Yeah. I don't foresee why not. Chances are I'm going to be buying this car. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Maybe somebody out there can tell me what this is all about, but it's been installed here for some weird reason. But there she is. Without any further ado, guys, now that you know what I did acquire, I want to start off with the very first of all the shenanigans that come with a car of this age. This was the key given to me by the car dealership. Uh, it is, by all means, aftermarket. So we went ahead and for a whopping $26, if only the lighting was any good, we, my friends, acquired a Lexus key. But... Here we go, let's get started. <sighs> that V8 sound, I love it. So, <laughs> not even a hundred uh, miles later and uh, check this out. Yeah, ignore the seatbelt light, the other ones that are definitely a problem that's what you should expect when you buy a 28 year old car it is a few days later because you know things get in the way uh a thousand was dead i had to jump that one and make room for the new player in town so why is it in the garage well one we did find out what check engine light was for it's actually nothing too absurd it was for the oxygen sensor i went ahead because this car is two of them for the price that they cost i might as well just replace them both but the main reason why it's here today on a quick ramp action is so i can do this oil change because i do plan on driving this car throughout the week i don't have access to my lift until early next week so i you know what let me show you guys how dark this oil is before i show you guys the condition of the oil that this is uh just sharing with you guys that's what i'm using uh, i was actually pretty surprised that nowadays you can still do for less than 50 bucks a oil change and again just the filter that they were offering with the promotion but let's take a look why i'm insisting on doing this sooner than later 
I mean, the oil level wasn't lower or anything, guys, but I'm sure you can agree with me. This camera focuses. That, yeah, it just looks pretty old. The sticker on the window is very faded, so mine as well. Get this done. As I finish up the oil change, I figure I bring you up some points. I want to show you guys the oil filter in a second, but as you can see here, this is the sticker that was in there. It actually, I believe, is cut according to the sticker at a little less than a thousand miles before it was due, which is it's a plus. If there's one thing I don't like is to see cars that come in way overdue with their oil changes. Uh, but so far, so good there. Uh, this is the oil filter on the car as you can see I mean this car part of the problem with this car although it had low mileage is that um, the last 9,000 miles of the car were performed in the last 13 years yes uh, car was not being driven very often adding more to the story the last owner actually passed away at the age of 91 which means he walked up to a used car dealer at some point in time in his life when this vehicle had, I believe it was 122,000 or something like that. 123, excuse me, and change. And it's why only 9,000 miles. And at 78 years old, he decided this was the car that he wanted to drive. And hey, man, as far as I'm concerned, he had very good taste. But that brings me to a point. It is 28 years old now, the car that is. And as you guys can see here, I got some brake fluid there and the reservoir is full because take this as a lesson and that's what this whole exercise will be as I go along with repairing the car. I, do, I just discovered something new. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. As we look underneath here, if you take a closer look, this is why you should always expect to be performing repairs when it comes to a car of this age. Yeah, if you notice there, this wheel is very much wet. I, of course, wanted to double check that this wasn't water or moisture of sorts, and it's not. Uh, because, sure enough, I had to add about a cup of brake fluid, which now means that this is not something that should be taken lightly. I will now put this car on hold until I have a chance to put it on a lift because clearly either I have a brake line leaking in this corner or the caliber itself is leaking. But upon closer inspection, I'm gonna see if I can dig deeper and give you guys an update right now. Oh, perfect, we got lighting. Well, so this is actually a little scary because somebody clearly just replaced this brake line. And for the untrained eye, if you look in between the fitting there, there's no washer on one corner no washer on the other corner. Of course it's leaking. It's supposed to be a washer there. Crush washer that is. So, let me get dig into my stash and see if I can find something. Well, unfortunately guys, I did not have any crush washers in my personal stash, but we will address the issue. And of course I'll show you guys what I did to fix it. It's very simple. Honestly, it was, as they say, a very honest mistake. This happened to the best of us. I hope you guys with this sequence are taking for me that uh, when you do buy a used car that you're not familiar with the history, there are just certain things that you should definitely address. Uh, as you can see right now, I am draining the fluid out of the transmission. 14 millimeter socket is what you're gonna need. But I figure, as always, give you guys a very good Example here, so you see why I'm changing it. Right side, fluid that came out of the transmission. Left side, fluid that's going in. Speaking of which, on these older Lexuses, uh, ATF type uh, T4, yeah, type T4 is what you want to use. And uh, you want to fill it to there, warm up the car, and then check to see where it lands on the hot side, and that's how you're supposed to do it. Yep. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. I believe, according to what I read, you're gonna need only two quarts, but just in case, I did grab two more. Uh, let's face it, after all, 
I am going to do this twice, so yeah, let's get cracking. Although a bit noisy here in the shop, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how it's actually supposed to look. If you see there, one crush washer, two crush washers, and we are, of course, going to sort out the passenger side as well because if you pay close attention it is missing one of them so let's go ahead and correct that this is way too good not to share with you guys so uh yeah this is uh this is what's happening right now and that's why i'm doing this in the shop you're going to need a wrench let's get you guys some good lighting here and uh yeah this is what's happening in case any of you find yourselves in this position which i hope you don't it is an m18 by 15 that is the one you're looking for oh yes of course this one is in the same kind of predicament do you see do you see this uh this display here uh, let me give you guys the correct tool for this uh, tap and die set I've had this guy with me for 20 plus years and it's very useful. There's your uh, part number and it's made by Pittsburgh. Very, very useful. Ah, let's go ahead and do this twice. And when it comes to the new sensor, I would normally tell you guys to put this stuff in it. Look how beat up this bottle looks. Uh, but the new ones do come with it. You put it on the threads. Uh, for those of you interested and there are following this, that's the part number you're looking for, O2 sensor. There's two of them, same exact part number. And when you're done chasing the threads, that'll look a little something like this. I mean, let's face it, we are on borrowed time with this exhaust system, but for right now, I think we're gonna be A-OK. -okay. Take your time as always, and she should go right in, no problem. Oh yeah, as far as oxygen sensors are concerned, this is what you're looking at. Gas pedal has got to come out, side vent, come out, carpet, come out. And then that's the wire in question. This guy got to come out. So you got another 10 mil. And now this whole thing should come out so that you can expose Easy, super easy. And yes, if you guessed it, same process on the passenger side, then you were correct, my friend. But hey, on the plus side, now we know that LS400 has two AC drains. The more you know. Now the point I wanna make here, guys, top tip, always check the date on your tires. These are now six years old. So this is the 31st week of 2018. We are in 2024, and although this tire is by all means in very good condition thread-wise, it is at a round, and that is obviously from sitting. Furthermore, if you pay close attention to that size, you will notice that it is incorrect. So I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. Yes, some of you are gonna point this out. I'm aware it is not V-rated. Uh, that's okay, because we do not live near the Autobahn. But let's go ahead and swap these tires out. This one, guys, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's a heat spot right there. So needless to say, uh, yeah, pad slapping at its finest here, but we're gonna correct that, of course. And as you can see here on this one, quite a bit of rust buildup. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it right. Now, you guys remember that little light that popped up in the dash? It was none other than the pads, brake pads sensor. So watch the fix I'm gonna do for this.
splice both ends there. All you want to do is get some shrink tubing, slide that one in first, put it away deep inside as much as possible. And then one of my favorites are this guy. And we're gonna go with the smaller side. And all you gotta do, strip the wire, of course. Slide it in like so. Slide this guy in like so. So this basically, guys, is a circuit that is normally closed. So that's basically what we're doing here, right? Get a heat gun. And another thing said and done. Should look a little something like this. Whatever focuses, but point is, it is welded right in the center. Now you're gonna go ahead, fish your heat shrink. You know, let's see what we come up with. Uh, this one looks kind of tight, but let's see. A little more heat. You have it. Not pretty, but gonna do. This one, as corny as it might sound, is actually something that everybody should take into consideration when purchasing a used car, that is. Uh, you gotta make sure it's watertight. So we're here at the car wash and well, we'll see what happens because these LS 400s do have a sunroof. So let's see how this goes. And I'm very happy to report guys that uh, it looks like this 28 year old Lexus is A-OK -okay in that department. There is no drifts whatsoever. And that is a plus. I have owned some German products in the past I'm not gonna say any names that that wasn't the case and they weren't even 28 years old they were about half of that age so yes by all means if it comes with a sunroof do make sure that that one's not leaking because those seals for this particular car are probably not even available and there you have it guys as you can see we are just getting warmed up but not to worry because she is in the right hands now, after all. I do wanna apologize by the way I presented this video to you guys. It was very last minute and all over the place, as I'm sure you can uh, agree with me. But I do wanna thank you for watching. If you are into this kind of stuff, if you have had an LS400 or own an LS400 right now, let me know in the comments down below some of the common issues. I'm sure we're gonna be addressing them all in the future. But in the meantime, I wanna take this opportunity to please ask you to support this channel and this build by smashing that like button. If you feel so inclined, please do subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. I plan on releasing at least, let's just call it one episode a month on the LS400, and that way you won't miss any. Guys, enjoy your rides. And until the next time, I will catch you guys on the next one. Oh, and by the way, I almost forgot. When I bought this car, I found the craziest thing I've ever seen a car dealer do to push a car onto the customer by hiding an issue. I'm gonna give you guys the minute marker in the video in which you, if paying close attention, can spot it. But not to worry, because we're gonna address it in the next episode.